Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Indeed, God has given us another day to be in his presence. Amen. Amen. And I know that we won't come out of this place empty-handed because he is a covenant-keeping God, a God who forever fulfill our heart's desires according to his will. Amen. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your mercy, for your favor. I'm in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and by your spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Once again, may I take this moment to recognize the presence of those who are viewing us in various media platforms. I want to say welcome to today's service. And I believe it is by God's providence that he has permitted us once again to be gathered in this manner. And it is my prayer that the word that we shall receive today shall have meaning upon our lives. Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew 4 verse 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that shall proceed from the mouth of God. And I would want to believe that the word that shall be released today shall be the word from above, the divine word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Without wasting much of your time, I'll encourage you to open your Bibles this morning to a very familiar scripture. This scripture we are about to digress is in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter number 6. We'll be reading from verse number 3 up to verse 10. I would have loved to read the whole chapter so that we have the depth of understanding of where I'm trying to draw your attention to. But with God's mercy and grace, I believe these few verses will be able to give us the ground on this word. Amen. We are reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, and the verses number 3 up to 10. The Bible reads, and I quote, Now Daniel was so distinguished among his peers, the administrators, and the satraps, by his exceptional quality and his ability. I want us to understand something here. I'll read this again because this is the very meat of our subject today. It says Daniel was distinguished among his peers. Meaning Daniel was not appointed alone. Daniel was not alone among the administrators and the satraps that were appointed by the king. But there was something about Daniel that was peculiar to the extent that even the people around him noticed that he was a distinguished person. By the special grace of God, I have entitled our message as having absolute faith. I would be failing in my duties if I will not remind you of the scripture of my spiritual father because we are just going to zero in on the same teaching that my father in the Lord dwelt on on Wednesday and on Sunday. I'll try to endeavor, I'll rather endeavor to dig deeper into what our father had shared with us. 
may I get one of his citations? If you remember, our Father in the Lord gave us a very serious citation concerning our spiritual standing. He mentioned something, rather he cited something. He said, if you are to be a man and a woman of spiritual influence, it must be born out of the fact that you are a person that is grounded in the word. I hope you remember that. He said, if you have to be a man or a woman of spiritual influence, you must be a person who is grounded in the word. And we are going to see that Daniel had encounters that demanded him to be grounded in the word. Because if he was not grounded, it was very easy for Daniel to doubt God. It was very easy for Daniel to lose his faith. And in so doing, I have entitled our teaching today as having absolute faith in God in times of adverse or in adversity time. Having what? Faith. There is faith and there is faith. There is faith which you and I here we have. But when a time of test come to you, it comes to test your faith. Umuntuli wanse kutialando kutila ndi muntu wa chichatekelo. I'm a believer. I'm a spirit filled believer. But wait for a moment when a challenge or an adverse atmosphere lands on him or her. That's when you will see the true identity of that individual. That's when you will be able to measure the depth of faith in that individual. And we are seeing in the life of Daniel at the time of his ascendance in his physical life there was an attack to his faith. You can imagine you are a believer then people who are around you gather up gang together to bring you down. Not to ilone shoktilo imu ntubale fo kumu ponya panshi physically only. Te kumu binifye eko bale fo kuisha Daniel. But the main purpose of the attack from the federal administrators and satraps and the other leaders was based on bringing Daniel down spiritually. And you must understand, as a believer, there will come a time in your walk when your faith will be tested. There will come a moment in your life when your spiritual walk will have to go through fire. The bone of contention is, how will you be able to come out of such an environment? Hence, the teaching of our father. He said a spiritual man observes anything that comes to him and he assesses anything that comes to him spiritually. You must be a person of influence to be able to defeat. And I mean the kind of influence, if we don't come to him, it is spiritual influence. The influence ya pakanwa. Te kukakata. But it is the influence that is born on the word. Rather, that is grounded in the word. Your faith, my faith, cannot grow if the word of God is lacking in us. Believe you me, if your faith is not grounded on the truth, you will not carry your cross. Remember that each and every one of us, as we are gathered here, we have crosses on our backs that we carry. Some of us, 
It is diseases. Some of us, it is financial instability. Some of us, it has penetrated and permeated even into our homes where the husband and wife, they live a life of cut and rat. But when you scan that family spiritually, you will notice that they are going through a battle. It will take you and me in this adverse environment where we have found ourselves to be grounded in the truth. I want you to take you to this scripture. The Bible says Daniel was a distinguished leader among his satraps. And if you go down, the Bible says, and at the time, the administrators and the satraps tried to ground, to find ground on which to pin him down, to find ground or to find a fault in you and in me. But they could not find anything that could ground or rather that could cause Daniel to be brought down. Physically, they could not find anything around him. The Bible says he was a person who was incorruptible. They tried to find a way to bring this man down, but they could not find any misconduct in the life of Daniel. The question that I pose to you, servants of God, is how are you living? How is your faith? Are you able to stand the waves that are coming before you? To say you are a believer, it is not enough. To say, oh, me, I'm grounded. It is not enough. There is coming something that will test your faith. It will be that Something that will gauge you whether you are truly what you are confessing. Daniel, a person who was blameless, a finger of accusation was raised against him, but they could not find fault physically. This time around, they said there has to be a way we can find anything to level against him. They had to go in spiritually. Be careful with the environment you find yourself in. I'll drum this always and I'll always remind you that life is more spiritual than we perceive it. My father, some time back, maybe three, four days ago, I think it should have been Friday, he was teaching something that caught my spirit as he was teaching. He gave a very vivid example as he was teaching. And he, he went to a certain lady as he was teaching. He said something. He said, someone, you might be seeing someone as though he is, he or she is reading and understanding the word of God. But in the actual sense, He's drifted away and is wallowing in his own troubles. We saw a certain reaction in one of our fellow members. What am I trying to do to, to tell you? We need to understand that your faith should be based on the word of God. And you should know that there is coming a time in your life when your faith will be tested. The key that will help you to come out of any given circumstance, it is the word of God. Daniel had every right to go physically before the king and say, Mwemfumu, ngezio mwanjishiba, ababantumambe peshiafye. And if you read in the scriptures, you will notice that even the king was not convinced of what these people 
said. But because a decree, a law was passed, he had no option but to fulfill what the law demanded. Believers, learn from the life of Daniel. A man who was blameless in every sense of the word went through a trying moment. But his dependence was not on what was surrounding him. Stop looking at what is around you. Stop determining your destiny based on what you are going through today. It is only a matter of time. You will come out of this. The Bible says when Daniel came before the king, the king was touched by what these people were saying against him. And he went on. I don't want to read the whole scripture. In your own time, you can find time and read this chapter. Because of time, we have a deliverance service ahead of us. But what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that Daniel, Tashim Tilile Kumubidi, if you permit the enemy by exhorting the challenge that is before you, you are giving ground to overcome you spiritually. Your spiritual strength is in the word of God. Whatever comes, let the word of God be the judge. Don't trust your mind. Because this mind, Satana, but I want to tell you, there are certain things that you must go through as a test. There are certain things that will come your way to raise you to another level. My mothers know what I'm talking about. It is at the point of birth that our mothers stand the ground to bring us out to this world. If they lose their faith, I don't think most of us would be seated here today. If they gave up, I don't think the person who stands before you would be here today. They stood their ground until we entered the ethereum. In the same way, fellow believers, Daniel did not give up and raise their finger against God to say, Mwenesa, I've lived a life that is upright. I've saved you in a right way. Why have you permitted such adversity to before me. Rather, he went in that dungeon of lions with a heart that is prepared. With the assurance that where I am going, I'm not going there alone. I'm going with him who appointed me to be there. The one who raised me to be where I am today. I came to speak to someone this morning that your challenge may be as high as a mountain but if you have Christ on your side if you have faith in you like a mustard seed it's only a matter of time every evil hill that is before you shall be leveled forever mbitu isanga mukufuaya cancel we ended up in the wrong company that advised us wrongly that caused us to do things that were ungodly why tatwashi pikishe pamotuleli nokwe ye udio ma ome uli pareodia eona lino kupwa you did not have faith enough to see beyond anything that comes in a hurry question it be ready to go in the school of faith in order to come out as a complete individual. You cannot be complete without you being tested. Even Christ had to go to the mountain of Golgotha to be tested. He had to go through that garden of Gethsemane. 
to be tested. Where was his father? He was there. Stop using this terminology. God is ever present. But your faith, servants of God, must be tested. For God to be God. It had to go through fire. The beauty. But we do not realize that for this particular ring to shine as it is shining, it went through fire. I came to encourage you. What kind of fire are you going through? I came to tell you that there is a God beside you. There is a fourth man that was walking with Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach in that furnace. They were not alone. You are not alone in this trial that you are going through. Hence, our father is reminding us that when you are a spiritual man, wherever you may be, even in the pit of hell, you'll be able to influence the environment. Why? Because the owner of the environment is inside you. Daniel knew that I'm not alone. Yahweh is in me. Even if I go in the den of lions, I am carrying the lion of Judah inside of me. Who are you carrying? In times of your challenge, face that seed of poverty and tell it because it is a spirit, address it. You spirit, let it be known to you that I will not bow to you because the one who is in me is the owner of God and silver. I was telling one of my brother, I had a very weird vision. I saw myself just like I came in. Then from nowhere, I saw my father seated there. Then he asked me a question. He said, the way he calls me fondly, Brother Jeff, I was startled because I found myself here as we are. Then he said, are you reading me? Do you know that I'm a book? I could not understand what he meant by that. Exactly as he's dressed, that's the way I saw him. He said, do you know that I'm a book? I got confused. I got at all. Learn to allow yourself to go through the process. Process is part of spiritual growth. Process is part of what? Spiritual growth. Any renowned servant of God, including my father here, some of us that have been with him for some time, we've seen a man of process. A man who was raised from a humble beginning to where he is today. And I want to register this and submit to you that we have not seen the end of this man. Why? Because of his dependence on the word. How I pray that we can emulate the kind of depth and faith that this man has. If you look back 10, 14 years ago, you would not believe that my spiritual father would have a you would have, God would give him the grace to have a multitude of people like we are gathered here. I remember very well. When I entered his home for the first time, I did not even know him. One time, we were praying. Praying, he was in front of me. Tulikuchechi, kumalemba. Praying, I ended up grabbing his, my brother can remember, I ended up grabbing his hand, praying, thinking he's just another prayer warrior. Five, 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 five. Then afterwards, it should have been him or any other brother, I, I don't, but it should be him because we used to, but he said, do you know that that man you were holding, I said, huh? That man, yes. 
And he did not stop me. We continued like that until that, 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 that intercession ended. What am I trying to say? A process is part of Christianity. Process is part of growth. If Daniel had chosen to use physical means, we would not be reading in the same way we are reading. The promotion that Daniel got after this process would have not been there. He left the battle for God. And if you read the scripture further, it says the same pit where they took him, his enemies were shoved into the same pit. And they were, they were, they were scattered by lions before they could even reach the ground. Why? Because they tempered no more no aqualis. Our father says, if you are a child of God, do not fear. You are not alone. Yahweh is with you. I come to speak to someone who has reached the point of giving up, who is deciding to let go of his marriage, who is giving up on his goals. I come to encourage you. Go on. Push. Push on. Very soon, what you desire, according to his will, shall be granted unto you. Someone who can have the persistence like a mustard seed. But we do not realize the process that a tree undergoes, the challenges that the tree faces to come up out of the ground. But it will continue to grow until it comes out. It is my prayer. These things that are surrounding us, they should not be the determinant of who you are. The word of God should be the basis of who you are. Don't look at yourself the way you are looking today. Stop confessing negativity over your life. You are not a mistake to come on this earth. Get me right. You are not what? A mistake to have entered the earth realm. You are a solution. The enemy is whispering wrong information into you to say, I came to tell you, my dear sister, it is not yet over. God has a plan for you. The process is part of that plan. If Daniel did not lean on God, he would have gone to the king and said, Mwemfumu, kwena, awe. But he did not use the physical means. Why? Because he was a spiritual man. Tell your neighbor, are you a spiritual man? Are you living by the word of God? Is the word of God a determinant in your life? If that is not the case, then you are in the wrong place. Because in this place where you are, the word of God has a final say. The word of God is part of you. The word of God is a process in your life. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. God bless you.